Welcome back, everybody, to the uh, White Cloaks rewatch. We are now on part four of episode four, uh, the middle part, the shittiest part, the the nougat of the shit burger chocolate bar that I okay. I kind of beat it out. We've all been drinking. So um, how far are you guys through your alcohol? Because uh, I'm on to bottle two. Uh, I didn't three and a half uh bottles into a 12 pack so got a ways to go uh yeah. nathan nathan how, how are you doing you still on the single uh, bottle of wine or did you stock up in the break uh no i'm, I'm still on the single you? bottle Small just day. just Someone cresting else. through the halfway point on it you paced yourself okay we're going to depend on you for all the critical um insights <laughs> on this episode coming up because i have a feeling... what i was brought on for I, I I have a feeling though that Pips is completely smashed along with me, man. Come on, Pips, you're you're leaving me hanging. Uh, yeah, I have already finished one bottle and uh, nice. and, and, and moving on and moving on from there. All right. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us again. We got through um, arguably a pretty terrible stretch of uh, this episode before. We're going to try and get through even more content today. We got our man of Manethrim. He's got his own YouTube channel on. He was one of the earliest guys uh, posting content onto YouTube, being critical of the show. He was a fan or hopeful fan, I guess, originally, but felt that he had to start flying the Red Eagle banner to kind of take the charge. We're glad he's on. Um, let's get pumped. Let's get amped. We are going to go through some shit now, right? What does anyone have to say about this scene? Alex? Birdcage. Okay, let's, let's start with me. <laughs> I'm going to call on you for this instance. Can you tell me what is to the right and the left of the cage? Weird fires with no appreciable lighting effect around them. They're in shadows. Bra braziers, and it seems to be lit from the top. Mm -hmm. Braziers that don't cast light. Yes. Phenomenal work. Everybody involved with this project. The lighting in this show is legitimately worse than the CW. And I stand by that statement. Well, here's the thing. I think they are casting light, but for some reason they're only casting it behind the brassiers. Yes. I just want to point out that, uh, so previous, previous guest, uh, Kala, brought up the Loghain sort of like religious kind of symbolism. Has anyone noticed the nice bright cross just to Loghain's right. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's too that's too subtle for these idiots. <laughs> but I get your point. All right, this apparently is a fifteen second scene coming up where nobody says anything except they all look like they're constipated. But it's reiterating that they have two sisters shielding him, not linked like they would be in the story. I like Karenny's man spreading. I just love these camp stools that they brought here. Like that's that's yep. how you that's how you pack light for a campaign. That's pretty good glamping. Those are pretty good stools. Now nah, we can keep going. Come on, we can. Again, more glamping. Look at that glamping. Okay. So oh. we just got through a scene where they're showing a birdcage, and the one of the first groups of people that they show are the two dudes. Yeah, which I, that's what, I, I get that reference. <laughs> See, thank you. Someone did. Oh, Robin Williams, how we miss you! What? All what? right, what? All, like the heterosexual relationships in this show, like no Where? one at any point is all over each other in the way that these two are. <laughs> So we've established here in this scene that Lan gets thrown into a pig trough and he has a fancy name and he's a shit horseman. Um, do you guys want to indulge me for a little tiny bit of how Lan was actually described by a third party in the books? Hit us, Dan. Go for it. He denies his titles, yet in the Borderlands he is called the Uncrowned. And if he ever raised the golden crane of Malkir, an army would come to follow. But he will not lead his men to his deaths, to their deaths. In the blight, he courts death as a suitor courts a maiden, but he will not lead others to it. 
If you must enter the blight, and with only a few, there is no man better to take you there, nor to bring you safely out again. He is the best of the warders, and that means the best of the best. You might as well leave these boys here to gain a little seasoning, and put your entire trust in land. The blight is no place for untried boys. Is that a Agomar Jagad? Yes. And here you got the fucking warders making crass jokes about him. Like I just want to say, a so we joke. We've talked. We've talked about this before. You know, words not words not appearing in the books. Is the word shit in the Wheel of Time? No. Comment. Comment down below. Search. Search. Whatever. It's Dane not. is saying no. It's I think not. he's right. I think I'm right in bringing up the question. Uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Dane, Dane is a hundred percent right to say that literally no warder would talk about land this way, uh, but also the, the warders hold him in awe. Yeah, he's legendary. Yeah, like the the next time you see Lan interact with a warder or whatever, he's uh, they're at Adelaus and Van Dien's hut where they're they're trying to uh, compile their history of the world. That's in the Great Hunt. Yep, and I think she or Lan basically practicing his sword forms. Uh, forces Jam, yep, is his name. Yes, to Jam. basically go and practice his sword forms again. Like, oh, this guy shows up, and even though I'm like 80 and I'm a decrepit warder, I still got a job to do. So then he decides to go and start practicing, basically remembering who he was. Like, that's what yep. Lan is. He's basically the inspiration for all the other warders. He's not a shit horseman. He's not this. He's not the butt of these fucking campfire warder gay jokes. It, <laughs> But is he a is he the the nipple twisting designated griever? <laughs> we'll get to that. So I guess what is this show actually established about Lan? He's a shit tracker. He's a shit woodsman. He's a shit horseman. I feel like he's got at, no co combat medicine. Forget about it. I feel like right. at this point, has, in the has books, no idea what to do with fucking Marine's wound. I feel like at this point in the books, they had they had planted some seeds that were interesting. That that it makes no sense they didn't. They wanted to try and do the budding the budding romance between Nynaeve and uh, and Lan. So why is it that the whole like Marine dropping the you know Lan Mad Mandragoran Lord of the Seven Towers? And then Nynaeve kind of picking that up with some intrigue and like, what is what is what is this whole Lord of the Seven Towers thing? Why is that not in here? You would think if you're trying to establish some sort of an interest that that would fit in there. And instead we have, well, he's a shit horseman and Nynaeve is like, I love dudes who suck at everything they do. Oh, she she gets in on it, right? So let's play it a little bit forward, but she gets in on the ripping on land. <laughs> I tracked him. Fuck you, Maxim. You're the worst fucking character in the show. <laughs> I, I, Everyone knows it. We all know how you got the fucking job. Huh? You suck dick. I Literally and figuratively. I knew oh, he's you lying. couldn't resist. He's lying because he likes the person sitting between his legs. He doesn't like her. Oh, uh, man. It's all I right though. You to like her. Do you like her? <laughs> so this was written by a fucking eight year old. And that's an improvement. Uh, I think that in uh, earlier things, you've said that this show was written by fucking five year olds. True. I guess I'm hurting a little bit from the uh, Chris Hemsworth saying that uh, Taika Waititi is a seven year old. <laughs> So I don't know. I. So you judge. I don't you know judge Wheel of Time. Are. You judge Wheel of Time as slightly better than Thor: Love and Thunder. Is that is that what you're saying? A phenomenal question. I think I don't, care. Don't don't even bother. I do about Wheel of Time, so the the it hurts a little Dane, more. Dane, tell but... us the difference between different types of shit again. <laughs> oh well i i steal all my types of shit from uh the poop swatches from south park so there's um classic brown there's nut and corn crunch there's baby green and there's a couple other ones like there's a number of different colors that you can smear the walls with but uh at the end of the day it's all shit so 
let's not debate the merits one time or one way or the other because it's all aesthetic at the end of the day also fuck you Steppen. you're gonna ruin literally one eighth of this actually you know what honestly one quarter of this entire show is ruined by your existence all of it is pretty much <laughs> i was dumbfounded when they when i found out he only has 16 minutes of screen time in that episode I, li- I like how Ivan still has the South uh, or Sub-Saharan African accent. Damn right. I, <laughs> I didn't grow up caring enough to remember that dude's name. <laughs> I- so Ivan is, is actually one I was going to say um, Ivan's from the books. Alana's warders in the show. Um, Maxim is not. No way. You're telling me that Rafe shoehorned his boyfriend, his literal yes. in real life boyfriend yes. into the show? Yes. I don't believe you. It- no, it it I have the guide in front of me right here, okay? What, can what hear is it. Alana's... I'm flipping it open, and I'm going to the M's, and I'm going to try and find Maxim. M-A-K-S-I-M. And I guarantee you, this guy does not exist. So the, the question this? is, so Alana did have a second warder who got yeah, named killed. Owen. Yeah, I was going to say. I think who, different spelling than yeah. um, than Tom's son, uh, yes. nephew Owen, who got killed in the two rivers in the Shadow Rising uh, by White Cloaks, actually um, by archers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I guess uh, I guess he just sort of saw an opening, and he was like, "Yeah, there's a there's a warder. He gets yeah, killed. Saw an opening. You sick fuck." <laughs> The question is, are we going to get the satisfaction of seeing Maxim killed the way that uh, Alana's actual other warder is killed? We can only be so lucky, I think. Dude, we're going to be lucky if fucking Maxim doesn't liberate the, the Stone of Tear at this point. Like... <laughs> he, it's already, okay. We've already seen Maxim has sat on the Amberlin seat. That was the, the behind-the-scene pictures that were released. So uh, the, war- so, the warder here, lounging on the Amberlin seat. Say. Page 442 of the Companion, for anyone who wants to doubt me on this, there is a Mac Zim with a Z, or a Z, as you Americans call it, a warder leading the training of the students to be warders after the tower was reunited under Egwene. He was stern and thick-armed. Gowan said that he would speak to Maxim and Chubain on behalf of the younglings who wanted to be soldiers instead of warders. Nothing about Alana whatsoever this is and it's spelled differently there's a mac zim warder alana there's also wasn't in the tower an alana warder during that time maxim. period so it literally couldn't possibly have been her warder right yeah. it's another case of uh of rafe taking something like yasaka and inserting <laughs> something completely different hey, in place of it in the hey show. dan hey dan go read the line from uh from the companion about yasaka Oh, fuck. I know the line. In- incomplete <laughs> knowledge is better than complete ignorance. I think we went through this. This is like, this is a Donald Rumsfeld level insight, but not even that smart. All right. Uh, let's move on from this. I fucking hate Maxim more than Stefan, maybe, except he doesn't get. Okay. She's going off to get DP'd. <laughs> oh. They're, they're going to do something for them. Yes, you do, Maxim. Here's a question: was was that a them plural or them singular? Or, or maybe he's saying now sometimes she serves me, in that sometimes she sucks my dick. Nah, <laughs> I think this is them plural. <laughs> I think uh, them singular is coming this season. <laughs> Something is coming this season, and its name is Swan Sanche. We are part of the finger cuffs, Aja. We need we need Salty Texas C to come in here with his uh, scissors with googly eyes. It's coming. Is it the cunnilingus old tongue? Ugh. That, that technically is true, but the the worst line in the fucking show is coming up. No. And I know I say that all the time, but <laughs> it steadily gets worse. All right, play, play it. Let's see the worst line. Let's let's hear Dane's just. It's one word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was that it? Was that it, Dane? You got to no, tell him to pause. No, no, you got to tell him to pause. Oh, Land says it. Surprise to that one. What does that make you? Fuck you, Land. No, <laughs> <it 
Oh my god. <laughs> they they completely contradict the each other in this whole freaking conversation. We don't serve them and and well she says you serve them and he, they say we don't gives the meaning of the Aes Sedai and then says it's they who serve the world. Well what does that make you proud? Okay, but you didn't a- answer her question. You you just said we don't. Well, how do, how do you not serve them? You do in this show. <laughs> I mean, is, exit stage left. Oh. Yeah, exactly. It's they don't even it's bother answering. Ass. It's just a quip. Is what this is. Like anyway. I legitimately have the question. Like they have no intention of making the Aes Sedai anything other than like like phenomenally perfect, right? Like this is such a bizarre thing to mm-hmm. establish early on. If you're going to be remotely book faithful in any of the coming seasons, like we're establishing the Aes Sedai are phenomenal and fantastic. I, I, I don't understand this. It is so fantastic. They get multiple men horny after them such that, you know, an Ugo like Kareni could get Stepan, a complete slag like Alana can get DP'd every night if she wants. Um, and and probably will upgrade to the airtight uh, when Gowan decides to join that fucking fun little circle, um, which, which isn't seen kind of as a bad thing in their eyes. Like this is something women should aspire to. They're powerful. They're strong. We'll get some slave men who are able to provide them pleasure every night. Like it is actually worth scene, pointing out that they literally are slave men. That the so this is something that uh, you know Alex Alex wants to wants to do a response video to another YouTuber has who has gone on about the the difference between the the Ashaman and the Aes Sedai sort of bond, but the bottom line is that the Aes Sedai bond includes compulsion, which means that anytime they want to, they can compel their warder to do anything they want to, which means that warders are either under compulsion or the implied and implicit threat of compulsion all the time all the fucking time so this this is actually the whole like alana comes over here and the two of them go with her that's rape that is as much rape as statutory rape is rape so what we've seen is that all of the Aes Sedai well, are a bunch of fucking rapists g- given what we know about alana and what she does in book six do you think we'll ever see that in the show or do you think they'll <laughs> sacrifice gowan on that there altar is... so she can get I think that we, I think that we, I think that we might see it, but what we will not see is any recognition of the fact that bonding a man against their will is anything other than giving them a precious fucking gift that they should be thankful for. (laughs) This is going to be the Wonder Woman 1984 of, uh... and I haven't seen that movie, so you detail it and uh, to avoid spoilers, I'm going to go do the bathroom break I should have done. I feel like that's pips is that necessary uh the the bathroom break or the the uh wonder woman 1984 the 1984 i uh, know i totally agree with you i think that that was a weird creepy thing that hollywood decided to do but i say let's uh let's try and advance this video while dane is gone we can actually get some real forward headway here without him interrupting Nate, man of Manethrin, do you got anything for uh, for this? Oh, this this shit irritates me so much because they, again they say we don't, and what happens when Alana walks by? The first thing they do is jump right up and go and follow her, and it just again it proves that relationships in this show are only tantamount to sex. That is that it has is nothing very to true. do with. Yeah, there's no such thing as the platonic friendship. You know, there's there yeah, exactly. It's it's all reduced to simply physical Yeah. They're off the daisy chain, are they? Actually sacrificing for oneself. I'm a bit tired myself. Does that mean Land's gonna go fuck Moraine? Because that's gotta be what uh, Nynaeve's thinking right here. <laughs> right? Fantastic question. And then, I mean, CW chuckles. Chuckles. I mean, we yeah, do yeah. know from the books that uh, Nynaeve is is jealous 
of of moraine and land so maybe uh maybe it's just establishing it and that says some weird stuff about the fact that like literally two episodes from now or three episodes whatever right. it is that naive is banging him so i guess is that is that sort of like she <laughs> she feels like a you know like she's she's achieved something she's sort of beaten out her rival what are we supposed to take away from that uh we'll we'll, we'll get there when we get to that uh, yeah. sorry sorry well, you're right, you're right. and according according to the show standards what's wrong with Moraine if she's been with Land for 20 years and hasn't gotten to pound town you know while everyone else is banging their <laughs> uh, orders what is going what is up with her i feel like actually the well, show that, is establishing no, no, that she, she's just she, bored. She she's loves, bored of land maybe it, the show solves itself she's actually fucking uh hot for swan right yeah that's exactly uh, the fact that their relationship isn't sexual is indicative that moraine is not bisexual that she is uh actually full-blown just- lesbo but yep. and, and so they are the exception. So every every other fucking water relationship is all about DP and, and getting airtight, except for Moraine and Lan, which is uh, because Moraine's a lesbian. So what does that make Lan? Which speaking of people who bring up, he's an incel. Lan has been reduced <laughs> to an involuntary celibate. Uh that's a that's a good freaking point. What I was going to say is that people who bring up, the, you know, Tom Marilyn is going to, oh, sure, he exited, but he's going to be there in season two. Like, of course, Tom's going to be there. It's like, nope, Tom is a threat to Moraine Swan. They they sidelined him for a reason. Uh, he is never going to be an important character in the show, I, I think. What what do you guys have to say? I think he's gone. I think Good. if we see him in episode, give, give if him we the see him in season Tom two, cast, nah. I'm, I'd be happy if I never fucking see him again. I actually am almost tempted to say that I disagree in the sense that from what I understand, Rave because you're drinking beer. You're drinking beer and you're not <laughs> drinking <laughs> wine. Come on, Alex. Up the game. Um, he's not part of the team. Yes, and so like they, that they they intentionally didn't have him in the first three episodes because they wanted this particular actor so bad, and this actor had other obligations during the filming of these three episodes, so that they accommodated that. How could you possibly see this actor and be like, "We need you" to yeah. the point that, that we was, will that destroy the plot? The other, the, but the flip side to that argument, so I'm. It's a rumor that I heard. I don't know if it's 100% true, because if you go through the original Rajnor script, which presumably occurred before all the casting calls, there's no Tom in those, or at least episode one. Which is the the one thing that I think, you know, can can maybe refute that, but I, I would not be surprised at all if it was in episode two, uh, heavily. Um, but the... The one thing that I'm wondering is if they almost play it off as, um, you know, Moraine is tempted, uh, but ultimately chooses the correct uh, sapphic option of Sawan. Like they almost do like a CW look <laughs> thing. Good use of the word sapphic. All right, let's get through this nonsense scene because I think this is going to settle um, some of the speculation that we had kind of early on in episode one about Moraine and Land's quest. Uh, step away for a second, fellas. Not a problem. You didn't miss much, but uh, did you? Should be fine. Is that like 15 seconds without them saying anything? He's 10 years too old. At least. He's 20 years too old, which magnified by the <laughs> slowing makes him 200 fucking years too old. You dipshits. Stronger than Egwene. He's on a different fucking level than Egwene. Come on, in the books. keep on. We can't. And, we can't and, pause on this. This bullshit. I don't know why. This... No, let's keep going. We we've already established they have no idea what they're doing with one power and recognize. That's the first true thing she said in the entire show is that she doesn't know shit. <laughs> Good thinking, Lan. Dumb thinking Moraine. No, th- this is a problem right here because it's been established through now three and a half episodes that Moraine is fucking retarded. 
And the dark one is like the antithesis of the creator, who's got to be some type of omnipotent, uh, semi-omnipotent intelligence. They know way the fuck more than you do, Moraine, because you're a fucking beetle compared to him. And you've demonstrated that. You're, she's the dumbest fucking character in all of fucking TV. Oh, man. She, yeah. They had the based opinion of uh, making Land smarter than her. <laughs> Not hard to do, but it was probably accidental. Or Very it was David accidental. Hill once again kind of lobbing that kind of anti woke grenade subtly so that it wouldn't be caught. I don't know. Dane, even even you're coming around. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm, Dane, I'm like Dane is coming over here like Wayne Yip is the best we've got. I, maybe I'm giving David Hill too much credit. Um, too many people in the show do stuff that we think is based, although it's probably accidental. So likewise, you shouldn't attribute to malice what can be dis, uh, attributed to incompetence. Mm. We shouldn't attribute to um, competence what can be equally attributed to incompetence. I've been having too much to drink. Let's keep going, boys, because we're not going to get through this otherwise. Yeah, let's do it. I don't know if that's a terrifying request. How, what? What? That line makes no sense. She doesn't give a shit about them. First of all, so they could just have the findings and then this whole problem would be solved. And instead, they yeah. chose not to do that. That was a choice they made to have her be less competent and have no fucking plan. Well, and now there was a throwaway oh, we line him. at the end of the Eye of the World that kind of implied that, that the findings and the granting of the findings was somehow compulsion or kind of skirting the limits of it. So that was problematic. So they got rid of it. But no. Except more, more than more likely is that they got woman. rid of it, so otherwise Moraine would have something to do other than hang out with all the other Aes Sedai and Loghain in this episode. So A woman anyway, compelling men is not problematic for these people, first of all. So uh, I don't think that's I don't think that's true. All right, uh, I'm back. But, oh, but let's awesome, definitely Nathan. go. Let's definitely we, go. We are at some of the shittiest dialogue, um, but let's get to it. Twenty years we have been. True okay. 20 years, they never figured out other than that they were 20 years old. We don't that's know weird. if the that's... dragon is a boy or a girl. Nothing other than... She hasn't even limited it down to half the population. <laughs> In the prologue, the only thing we know uh, is that... Just uh, how old they are. Are the world. But they don't actually know that because, you know, maybe that's wrong. Because Literally, they've they've they've, they've limited it to no one. So so now Lan says I lost them, and what does Moraine say? You lost them. Fuck you, Moraine. <laughs> Fuck you. So she doesn't oh, disagree. Oh, oh, oh. Well, but hold uh, on though. Then that means that when he led them in the show into Shadur Laguth. Shadur that means we're using the proper thing. show pronunciation, not the actual pronunciation. Yeah, we can't we can't confuse the two. It's Shudder Laguth. That's yeah. good. Nate, Nate, continue. Okay, but, Sorry, go ahead, Nate. But but her but her comment though just there makes that then her fault when they went into Shudder Laguth, because now his decisions are her decisions. So except except when you. they aren't. No, see this this yeah. is like quarterbacks in football. <laughs> Everybody says quarterbacks get too much credit when a team wins and too much blame when a team loses. Except that it's never the quarterback that gets blamed when the team loses unless they throw like nine interceptions. Like <laughs> this classic, classic Moraine Judkins. <sighs> Play it. Let's let's go. Come let's on. keep going. I can't keep looking at it. Don't worry, there's like a fucking three minute face. fucking tinker scene coming up. There we don't have to pause in at oh, all because it's just oh. terrible. Did he just say he needed a drink? <laughs> Fuck you, Lan. I I get emotional when I drink. Well, We're getting there. Yeah, the fact too that she also says that I we lost them, and it's like, yeah, okay, you lost them, but now you're not going to give a crap about them for another three episodes. <laughs> yeah, there is okay. like go out and try and find them. It's like they keep keep glamping for like an episode or two, 
and then it takes them a month and you're absolutely right later episode but they arrive in tarvalon and she does fuck all to try and find yeah. them because she's first Boy, busy it would have been nice Stephen's to have a funeral. coin but she's first busy with fucking Stepan's funeral, and then the next episode she's busy fucking. Uh, actually, I shouldn't have said fucking. She's busy fucking fucking Moray or um, Swan <laughs> with the scissors. Well, you know, it would have been nice to have a coin, I guess. No, that would or have been Oathrod. intelligent. They that fucking shoved that oath rod up their fucking badges and went to town on it. <laughs> Moving on before Dane gets us canceled. Hit play there, Alex. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this because people do you no, come on it on the basis that well they had to explain the warder bond no Here's they question, fucking didn't what the fuck didn't they explain about the warder bond in this fucking episode we just spent fucking five minutes on the warder bond no no, no 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 it's it's worse than that alex because you have to explain the warder bond the first time it like explicitly came up in a scene is when uh, Nynaeve is trying to heal um, Moraine quite shittily by popping her giant fucking blister zit. Yep. Right? The the pus and, thing. And Lan shares her And she her basically pain. says, she's like, I heard about the, the bond between a warder and an Aes Sedai. This is going to hurt. And then she pops it, and Lan doesn't react at all. It's because he's so stoic. That was, that was Rafe Judkins showing you how stoic he is. Yeah, just wait for fucking episode five is all I have to say to stoicism. Fuck the show. <laughs> Let's move on. I just feel... I just oh, it's to... very true. Well, people argue that they needed that because of the water bond. Now they fucking stare off into some... This scene fucking sucks, but we'll go through this. We can play a lot of this. You know what's funny is that over a lot of it. What's funny is that uh, unless we you know, need as some buffering. Now, as you're watching this, right? Think about what we saw in the show, which was that this was supposed to be like a sexy, seductive dance. The girls were trying to like, now nah, keep playing, keep playing, Alex. We don't. Need... They were trying yeah. to like attract I'm parents' attention. Here. Wanted to hear you. So, so this was supposed to be like a sexy, seductive dance, attracting, trying to attract parents' attention, uh, appreciating the fact that he was blushing and sort of being shy about it. So, I'll like, parent blush. So, or Gwen for that matter. So, just the ask yourself. Too dark. Modern television. We had like we had the scripted basis for like a like a sexy sort of scene, and they're like. Yeah, but what if we make everyone wear sort of like a poncho? What if we what if we did that? <laughs> yeah, right. We did we didn't we didn't even get like I don't know, belly dancing or anything like that. It's, we didn't even see we didn't so even sorry. see we didn't even see fucking ankles or a well turned calf. <laughs> this is Alex, this is fucking can I bullshit. A bit going forward is maybe we turn down the volume on the playback a little bit here. Let, Let's keep going from this. There are worse parts coming up. I swear, it looks like he's wearing a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> he's wearing a shirt and a t-shirt over that and then his poncho. It's better than the Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> this is a Grateful Dead concert. A shitty one. Like, you guys like fish? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is kind of where Perrin disappears. Don't worry, he shows up in like 30 seconds doing something completely different. But that's not as bad as the other jump that happened. So the, the scene right after this, uh, because of the editing, seems like there's no con well, there's an immediate continuity break. But you notice that too. Yeah, Perrin is basically hammering the wheel, right? But that 30 seconds prior to him fixing the wheel on the wagon coming up, he was just standing there aside from the dance. But I'll point out the more egregious one coming up. Uh, but let's go through the dialogue of this uh, talk about the song. You mean out of all of the world building that needed to happen in the eye of the world, we get the tinkers in their fucking song? That is that is that what we're talking about? Yes. Like, do, do we even give him like some credit for trying here? No, because they're using the music from Return of the Jedi with the fucking Muppets. And, and the person who explains it is cynical about it. And at this moment, anyway. 
That's true. He's a pretty shitty tinker, and I get that like he was a shitty tinker in the books, but only after watching like most of his family get fucking murdered, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> he doesn't have a reason to be this cynical and shitty yet. This but... is just this is just Rafe self inserting. He's like, yeah, cynicism. Hey, that's, that was a banned good. word. <laughs> banned two words with a hyphen. That's why I like to use it. Brit Trip is going to be in the comments section telling me, uh, you know, I need to stop self inserting. You live dangerously, my friend. But let's keep going. You have to believe it. Well, I believe it. But only old girls and children believe in this song. Gosh, the fucking nihilism. You're, you're in the, the tinkers you're in and the their wrong fucking, fucking nihilism. Culture, literally, Christ, like... You are a dick to your grandparents. <laughs> But literally, like the tink so far, we've seen that the tinklers are fucking nihilists. Like they're nihilist Donnies. They don't care about anything. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day someone will come and kill me. Well, I couldn't care less. I'll just fall with the fucking breeze, like I'm a leaf, <laughs> like a fucking Toronto maple leaf. A leaf on the wind. Watch me fly. A good, uh, good series into this. All right, let's keep going. How oh, profound. what an, an insight. All right. There goes fucking Rayan pounding the drums like he is fucking on fish. Here. There's Isla. Isla was right there dancing. Now, eight seconds later in the playback, you'll see her talk to Perrin. And you'll still hear the music for the dancing going on. That's coming up, yeah. You can see it in the subtitles, too. You're absolutely right. We we took notes, and we, we took the same fucking notes because we're fucking awesome as shit. Good job, Nate. <laughs> I, I, like, this would be shitty in local community theater. Like, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Perrin is working on something. Well, he's going to pound on something. We're going to play a bad effect over it. And then he's going to look up. Like, the one time we're going to see him use a hammer in the show. Oh, no, there's, there's one coming up. I'll point it out. Let's keep going. And we'll just see, make sure his mouth is open. There's Isla. She was dancing eight seconds ago. It's just because you All don't right, appreciate Alex, how women oh, have please, to always Please don't task. pause for the next three minutes. We'll talk through this. But quite honestly, this is a three-minute scene where nothing really gets established other than more yakking about the way of the leaf and the tinkers. But we got to play catch up a little bit. This scene is going to be too fucking long if we decide to pause through it. Is this... So we can talk over it because it's garbage. But yeah, I think we ahead. should just skip There's all of the... The uh... same stuff we've already talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's more like I could bring up the same points about game theory and prisoner's dilemma and how you shouldn't actually turn the other cheek because... It or the fact that that wagon wheel looks not broken. The wrong people to... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, or the fact that the wagon wheel he's supposed to fix looks not broken. We could talk about that, too. Hmm. I don't even think he pounded the peg all the way in. But in... <laughs> Let's not talk about parent and pegging. Like, I think we <laughs> That's, we're, save, we're saving that for episode five and six. I like how fucking Isla is turning uh, the way of the leaf into a fucking uh, mass or um, what's the thing? It's fucking Herbalife, the 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 marketing yeah. campaign. Pyramid if scheme. Only, if, yeah, pyramid scheme. If only I could convince two others to sell this shit <laughs> better than I do, then I can make more money. But it's a, it's such just, utopious bullshit. And and it's it's kind of stealing some of the dialogue from oh. the. Um, the visions that Rand has through his Aeol ancestors in the Shadow Rising, right? How old do you think Isla it... is in this scene? Hmm? How old do you think old? Isla is? 55, 60? So, so Isla is Aram's grandmother. So how and Aram's young... Aram's like 20. So, yep. Yeah, so how young was this supposed her daughter slash Aram's mother... Is this like a like yeah, a sixteen okay. so and pregnant? She she has like no 
Oh, don't pause. Don't Keep pause. going through here, Alex. We don't give a shit about this. We're talking about fucking Isla's age. She might be a good looking 60. That's all I'm saying. Maybe she stayed out of the sun. No, her, her daughter didn't follow the way of the leaf. She followed the way of the slut. <laughs> nice. nice. I was going to say, is, is, is Rafe Judkins making a uh, a black woman get pregnant at 14 joke here? Is that what I'm, what I'm getting? But she's, she's not black. She's fucking uh, gypsy. Which is weird because Aram is. <sighs> maybe maybe this, what actually makes sense here because Isla and uh, Rain, right? Rain, her husband, neither of them are black. Uh, so Aram is is at least half black, which means that his dad must have been black. The daughter yeah, we, slash we mother full sub-Saharan Africans amongst yeah, the, yeah. the tinkers. But... You don't need to pause here. <laughs> so the daughter slash yeah, he... mother of Aram was killed. Got it. We get it. Where is his dad? Is this just Rafe being racist again? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... Rave Judkins apparently implied that Aram's father, who is black, knocked up a 15 year old and then, <laughs> and then went the for a pack out. of smokes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're fucking canceled. Uh, about time. This is this is your show, Rafe. This is your show. We're just living in it. <laughs> we only comment on what you show us. This might be the worst lighting I have ever seen. So note that the light is on the right side of his face, and then watch where it is on the change. Like in front of his face? Oh, fuck oh, off. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I like how it was in it on his back before the pause, though, too. I mean, like... <laughs> they just straight up flipped it. Fucking hell. At least it's like sort of flickering. A lot of the, the episodes in this show have At just the most unnatural fucking, uh, the right side of the queen's face. <laughs> Cause we all know it's why. Hiding it completely. Kind of. You could see the hints of it because it Every is... actress has her has her good side, Dane. No. Stop being a bigot. <laughs> so now the tinkers have a room springer a room springer yep from the fucking Amish. That's... yep some go out and farm some set sail yeah both fucking Wait. shit you think you... Okay, okay you got a room springer and you're able to go out and fucking hack someone to death and uh... you'll be welcomed back Dane, that's that's foreshadowing for Aram picking up the sword. Okay, this is this is deep, detailed, deliberate stuff that you're criticizing. No, they here. turn the fucking tinkers into the Amish. It's fucking ridiculous. And, and so he now he's sitting there appreciating the way of the leaf. But while they were dancing ten seconds ago, they were he was criticizing the hell out of it. Only fools and children Except believe in this right. song. All right, we are getting close to the ending here, boys. That doesn't mean that there isn't. <laughs> that actually makes the dialogue make more sense coming up. Um, it wasn't the wind blowing. <laughs> I legitimately have in my notes. I really appreciate the like the male friendship aspect. If you could just do it while they're not laying in bed together, that would. Be... <laughs> Rafe is just sitting there like, yeah, this is normal, right? So presumably Tom had his um, performance to the Grinwells before this, and we didn't need to see it. Mm -hmm. The two of them just sat down, got cozy, didn't blow out the light until now. Artistic transitions. <laughs> the, this dream is, this is fucking ridiculous. So, okay, so Rand is not in his coat. Perrin with a hammer now. And that's Layla that he's hammering. Garen fucking teed. It's Layla. Matt's got bloody hands. For some weird reason. And now... Jump scare! Except it's fucking CGI Balsamon who's not scary. 
Now, what the fuck was Tom doing there so close and so immediately there to comfort Rand as he jumped out of his No dream? idea. No idea. But I got a bigger question. He's the How groomer. the fuck do they know where to run to, like, right now? Where's Matt? And then they go to this big fucking farm complex of all the buildings. They run straight into where Matt is. Let's let's go and see it. Well, that's what is normally. This? Normally, when says, you're looking, Wait, where's Matt? And then they and then you hear sheep bleeding. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> normally, when you're looking that's for your friend in the dark, you're gonna be like, "Hey, there's a building with a murdered child out front of it. I should probably go check inside. I bet that's where he is." They, Okay, spoilers, but that was my point coming up. Let's go. Do we? Uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the question. Damn Do it. we believe that this is all of them in Telemann Rod together, or is this just Rand's dream? Like, do we believe that Perrin in his dream is hammering his wife? Because I don't think Rand knows that. So I think the implication is that Matt thinks he has blood on his hands. Perrin is horribly beating his wife's corpse. Egwene is looking for Rand, and Rand is just showing up lost. I'm not going to ascribe any sort of intention or, like, deliberate plan. These people don't know what they're doing. And that that's their only defense. If this was deliberate, it makes it fucking worse. Fair. So they run through the whole farm complex. There's buildings everywhere. They go through here. They burst in, and then they see Matt. They didn't see Els Grinwell as a corpse outside. We'll see that a little bit later. Oh, God. He's got the herpes. The herpes disappears. He's got the fucking steak knife. And he throws a fucking knife to nowhere. He's got his two knives out, kicks him. Yeah. Oh, and he catches the so, knife. But anyway, go, go for it, so, Nathan. Go for it. The, okay, so in Whitebridge, Tom kind of takes the white cloak. If I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm remembering correctly, kind of takes the white cloak or the fade by surprise. Yes. Yeah, it's not here like he's in an here. enclosed, or yeah, yeah, it takes the fade by surprise. But then here he's in an enclosed space, no mobil, no no mobility, and he telegraphs all his moves. That fade would beat and kill the living shit out of him. Yeah, he's got no room for escape. Like Tom, Tom faced the fade in an open square, and the fade was not interested in him. He gave him a limp, and kind of continued yeah. to chase after Randon Matt. That's like. Many people have pointed this out. It's like Tom in this enclosed space, he's fucking dead meat. And if he survives, that becomes a continuity problem for the show. Like, explain yeah. how he survived this, please. And he wouldn't have lasted even this long. Oh, no. Probably not. Yeah, not well, even I mean, close. As soon as he grabbed the Fade sword with his bare hand, he was dead. Like, do we do we want to autopsy this scene because it's terrible? I, I think well, honestly, yeah. I, I, I think he had I, some I, blades out. Maybe he would have crossed them. Like if he had two. That's what I thought. I thought he. Him. I thought he crossed his blades and caught it. But you know, what? screw it. Let's don't, let's don't care enough to check. Man, that that really does look like one blade. Yeah, and one a hand. blade, one hand blade in it he straight up grabbed the fade sword by the blade <sighs> this what is worse the than... fuck we are shit mining because honest like again the whole point of this rewatch was let's go and relook at it and see if this gets worse or better this is a scene that i thought all right he had the two like he had a dagger in each hand and he made like a fucking x with him and he caught the blade between the two but what you're pointing out right here with this awesome pause is, yeah, he maybe caught it on his left hand blade, but his but right he's hand. Up, yeah. He straight up cut his right hand on the fucking sword of the fade. It would make more and sense it, if he had his two hands together in a block, you know, like holding the blade. But they don't even do that. He's literally just holding the blade. That, except Tom, the actor, Tom's actor 
whatever his fucking name is knows that this is a blunted sword and a fucking uh, stuntman. Yeah. But it's even worse. If you look at it, notice how he's got it in his right hand. If you watch it, he literally puts it to his left side and then brings it up one handed in almost like a backhand upper hand in a swing that would have robbed it of all power and enthusiasm. Like, you know, think if you were to like to like make a downward swing. But now imagine that you're you're putting your right hand on your left hip and trying to make a downward swing. Well, speaking of a downward swing, look at the fade. How is he holding that fucking sword? Is he basically Sing- single handed this down? I mean, he's Sing- back- single handed down backhand. Yeah. Single handed backhand. He started from his left hip with his single right hand, brought it up and then down in what is the most incompetent swing of all time. Yeah. And Tom's also holding the knife incorrectly. You why would you get into a fight with somebody holding the blade like that? You mean the the yeah, underhanded the, the underhanded yeah. sort of reverse grip that uh Hollywood fucking loves for some reason? Yeah, it's like the side holding of a gun. <laughs> uh, Fuck this show. Yeah. If I ever find the person who decided that backhanding a sword looks cool in Hollywood, I'm going to punch them in the face. <laughs> I'll bail you out when you get arrested for that. All right. He's only got one knife in his hand because he's grabbing the door open. And he's holding a knife in his left hand. So that confirms that the second ago, when he was holding those two up, it wasn't like a weird trick of the light. Like, nope. He had one dagger, cross blades with the sword. And then at one... least it was his left hand oh. that had the fucking dagger and his yeah. right hand that was free. So there's yeah. some continuity and there that we can give credit for. Also, not to steal Alex's thunder there, go, uh, that lamp there in the back corner <laughs> is giving off no light. Oh, I yeah, think dude. though, mm. I think though that now he suddenly has a dagger in each hand. So like from the door open scene, and he's, maybe he's turned got around. Deft hands, maybe he pulled one. He he got the second dagger when he opened the door. If you yeah. if you look. Get him out of here. Come on. Stop. Stop. Okay. Block. Yeah. No dagger. Oh. Let's keep going. Kick. Dagger. Open and... the door for the two of them. You can see Even though there, there's an open door just to the fucking north of them. And they could go into an interior room. Well, And like he's going to be able to kick the fade that far back. Yeah. No, yeah. Luckily the fade was on that wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so he, he kicked and then he magically got the second one. Luckily we Gosh. have a, a shaky cam and an out of focus cam so that we can... Uh, and now Not... we saw, we saw the dagger that we didn't know where it went. It was embedded in some fucking uh, post up there. But he, here's the beauty of it: is they leave the Grinwell farm, Rand and Matt, and then and they are... stumble upon the corpse of Els Grinwell, and are never pursued again. But <laughs> but here's the thing: Rand and Tom came through that door, yeah. and they didn't see the corpse of Els Grinwell. Yep. Out we go. See you later, Tom. How badly did the bro miss by? Hmm. No, well, he the fade was probably already clutching it in the shot. Now, no, I think his I mean, point though is that like Tom but, Tom really missed center mass there. Yeah, but that, that's a big miss. I mean, at the, at that point, why is the fade even worried about catching that blade? Yeah, he should have just let it go. Yeah, that's it. It is it is <sighs> wider than. Like, if you were to make an L with your left arm, it was wider than that and yeah. above his head. This is just as bad as when Lan took out three Trollocs in the first episode by swinging at their toes. We covered that. Yeah. It was pretty yep. bad. You mean hitting them with a yeah. foam bat? Well, you know what they... Uh, apparently what I learned today is the um, one of the lead fight choreographers of the show... Uh, self-inserted herself 
into the episode seven cold open. Hey, and why I'll, do you I'll get take to say full it? blame for saying self insert? <laughs> you said it like three fucking times, Pips. I'm allowed to use it once. You right? said it at least what? twice. <laughs> all right, fair. You know what? It's no Take longer banned as long as we're doing it in the proper um, context of either um, someone in the show taking over something uh, that they themselves believe is more important than the whole story, or it's a uh, dildo reference. Either one is now in, in the comments down below. Uh, comment if you think Dane is making up some bullshit to justify him being allowed to say it. I only said it once. Twice. Well, the first time I might have been calling you out on it, but neither here nor there. All right, dead girl. Why didn't we see the dead girl when we went into the fucking farm? Uh, they're very not observant. It's a bit of a problem. You're at a full sprint, and they weren't looking at well, the ground. The lighting on her was, it, it would have been really easy to see her. <laughs> <laughs> now the lighting on her is not good. That's true. That's that's really that. what it is. Is is the lighting when they're exiting the house was better than the lighting coming into the house. So coming anyway, into the house, they couldn't see her. Exiting the house, they could see her because it was different lighting. We're, we're four seconds from the end of this, but let's let's keep going. So they ride on the horses, which we'll never see them fucking ride again because one month later they don't have horses. They don't even have horses. Horse that's a good point. <laughs> Hey, have we uh, have we commented on Ray fridging another woman? <laughs> a couple of them, yeah, at least two. But but at least uh, Elsa Grinwell does not provide Matt with any fucking character motivation whatsoever. Oh yeah, this was forgot about literally as soon as the <laughs> as soon as one month that either, later happened. Way. I don't know. Didn't didn't oh. uh, didn't he bring her up at the stupid inn in Tarvalon? Tarvalon. He, he might have uh, been yeah Because Rand, about, Rand uh, is like, oh, it was Did, the did I actually it kill those fade. girls? Yes or no? Yeah. Don't worry, Matt. You didn't. You would know if you did. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the show. It's not like we're going to go now two consecutive episodes without having a relative Matt scene and then have another two consecutive episodes without having a relative Matt scene. Like... <laughs> We're seriously about to go four episodes without having a, a significant Matt scene. All right. Well, Amanda Manetherin, Nathan, uh, we're getting we're getting to the end here. So uh, right you've, here. you've the, watched the this doll whole at least shit fell show out of with his us. Belt, and this is the final shot, my friends. You've watched okay. this whole shit show with us. Is hey it as bad as you remembered? <laughs> it's fucking worse. <laughs> That's what we keep saying. <laughs> Um, but that's that's the answer we were trying to find out uh, right yeah. the whole reason behind the rewatch like every everybody please remember like the whole, whole reason why wheel of time has the fandom that it does is because rereading is a thing people read it once oh, and then yeah. they go back and they reread it and they try and find everything they missed the time beforehand and you it never ends pips pointed out to me this this whole thing in uh, in the shadow rising, Elaine constantly gets her veil stuffed in her mouth, and it's not mentioned, but it's implied by other characters and their behavior. Elaine always has her nose in the air, and that's why her veil is getting stuck in her mouth. And it's it's humorous, it's funny, it's it's a great bit of character. But even after however many rereads I've done, I didn't know about it until it was pointed out to me. And it's just an additional level of enjoyment that you can still get 20 years after the fact, reading the stuff, rereading it regularly. And there's no greater insult to Robert Jordan's legacy of the books and what he was able to do with his story than that a television adaptation of his story gets worse every single time you look at it. And I'll leave it at that. And the only thing I would add to it is that at least at this time, I've absorbed it enough that I can laugh at how stupid it is now. But in terms of the quality of it, yeah, you just, it's exponentially dropping. Yeah. 
I mean, that was that was what I was saying before that it's it's cathartic, right? Like you you kind of you kind of get to work through it. And like it is honestly, it is humorous. Like it's they they inadvertently made almost a comedy like it's so bad that it's man, like if it if it wasn't that they had such great source material to work from, this could be like, you know, like a like a B like a B movie sort of like. You know, the kind of thing that turns into a cult classic for being literally the worst thing that you could ever put to screen to film. But you just, legendary journeys. But you but you know what they had to work from. And you're like, how did you how did you fuck this up so colossally badly? Yeah, and, and this is where when we're done our rewatch, we should have a wide ranging full scale debate. I say bring on like a live stream, get everybody kind of who's interested in this to to say their piece. But th- this is the biggest debate in the Wheel of Time fandom right now. Was this deliberate? Like, was it malice? Did people who did this, did they hate the source material? Did they want to subvert it? Or was it incompetence? Oh, Dan, I, th- I, th- I think you're trying to oversimplify a very significant problem. This was both. Yeah. So so this was malice by idiots. Yes, this was Yep. This was there was every intention of subverting some of the absolute principles of this show. This was every intention of wokeifying this show. But to say that this was somehow a well executed attempt at such an endeavor is to to give them far too much credit here. This so was... the, the 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 fallacy of my um, suggestion was either or, when it was quite clearly and. Yes, you you almost have to go scene by scene and say what was wrong with this. Was this, you know, incompetence or was this, um, you know, maliciousness? Because truthfully. You know, you just pick out one of these episodes and you just go scene by scene and you can you can pick out both. Like, I mean, look at the shot we're on. Fucking how telegraphed was that little girl's death? Like, uh, good grief. The second she walked up and started spewing dialogue, you knew she was fucking dead. Like, (laughs) fucking Anybody who's watched a television show in the last decade knew that girl was fucking toast. And probably... Well, no, 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 because I'm a book reader, and it said she was Else Grinwell, and she doesn't die. Hmm. I'll be honest, if at this point you still expected them to be following the books, I, you know... I No, I didn't. I'm just, I'm (laughs) self-inserting. That's three, Dane. That's fucking three. All right. (laughs) <laughs> that one was on purpose and it was to piss you off pips but no it's not pissing me enough. off trip in the comment is just you know she's 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 fuming now nah, she's probably self-inserting <laughs> it's four there's, four there's, <laughs> oh, i'm sorry i guess my question is did, does anybody feel like oh look at it, it's so sad her doll is dropped on the ground like Fuck off, yo. You did nothing to deserve this payoff. You had one six line of dialogue conversation. Like be better. You know, uh, here's the here's the thing. I'm looking at this companion about Elsa Grinwell. The flirtatious Andorran farm girl whose family Rand and Matt stayed with while heading yep. for Camelin. Flirtatious Andorran farm girl. Yes. So this is the one girl that they aged down. Yes. By like 10 years. Like a lot, yeah. yeah. She, it, she tried to get it, it on. To me, that, sounds kinda, that makes it sound even creepier. Yeah, she tried to get it on with Rand. Maybe she yeah, did. Yeah, she did. Maybe she did in the show. It's just we cut that out like we cut out <laughs> Tom's fucking uh, performance. <laughs> but that, that's neither here nor there. I think... Uh, it's on the editing floor. <laughs> we fucking oh, hope not man. because that would be that that would be reason to basically get every one of these perps kind of canceled but Pro- profit of the dragon yeah. already covered one deleted scene if deleted scene number two is elsa grinwell hitting on rand 
Good fucking Lord. All right. Um, this was a great midsection of episode four, at least as far as us making fun of it. Uh, I got to say, uh, Mana Manethra and Nathan, honestly, if you guys are seeing this stuff, go check out his channel. He was one of the first ones producing content critical to show. He's been on a lot of live streams and been passionate about the series and articulating exactly what's been wrong with all this. So good YouTuber. Glad he was he's been on with us here. Um, hope you had a lot of fun. Hope you finally got through that bottle of wine, even though we're on our second. Right, Pips? Oh, yeah. Nathan, any final comments for this section of this horrid, horrid show? Um, over to you, my friend. Well, I appreciate you having me on and the kind words and all that. Um, it, this was a lot of fun. It is, it's fun to sit here and poke fun of, at the show with people of a like mind uh, who are at least, if not sober physically, sober in their reality of where this show truly stands. Um, it, it is a, a a dumpster heap of lit garbage on its best day. And, uh, you know, season two is going to be much worse, I think. Um, you know, so just everybody out there who watches this keep up the fight and you know if you guys are out there also also in disagreement with how this show is going how the adaptation so-called is being done put your voice out there on video as well because they can't silence us all you're here Reach, well man. put uh, Man Manethrin, what's uh, any anyone looking for you? What what are the places they can find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, my YouTube channel of Man of Manethrin, uh, and then every other Tuesday I'm on with Salty Texas C on his live stream. Uh, so that's a plug for his channel as well. Go check them out and uh, and my channel out, and you know appreciate you having me on. This was a good time. And yes, I have finished the bottle. <laughs> here, fan fucking tastic, and and this is the only way to enjoy the show is get together with friends, get together with a lot of alcohol, and uh, see if you can find stuff that we haven't picked up on. Because the the only way to get this show canceled, in my view too, and th this is our ultimate aim because we're trying to drive the market value of the show down so we can maybe buy it for like tree fitty um <laughs> it's to basically show these idiots we actually enjoy watching this and ripping on it with friends with booze and pointing out everything that's fucking garbage about it if we show not that like if we hate it if we uh, us types literally load the show and i know that we do but if we can show at the same time we have fun making fun of it that's the thing that they can't stand, right? That's yeah, they... the thing that they can't abide. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve here. This is why we're doing these videos like every two every week and going through it constantly and doing it regularly. It's not that we don't have a life. We enjoy doing this. We enjoy ripping on it as much as it pains us to watch it. And we need alcohol to cope for it. We are having a blast doing this. And you guys are fucking making our day when you guys produce shit content like this that we can rip on. Absolutely. Um, all I want to say is, uh, you know, comment, like, subscribe. Thank you, everyone, for the support. Amanda Manethrin, awesome, awesome dude. Had, had a chance to, to do some live streams with him. Uh, probably the best beard in the uh, in the Wheel of Time fandom that I've encountered. So uh, by he's far, good, he's a good by dude. Fucking far, he's a good dude. Go check him out. Go check out uh, Salty Texas Sea, Prophet the Dragon, the whole community full of uh, full of really great people. People who are interested in in uh, just having a good time, trying to turn something that was uh, like like Dane said, just absolute shit, and turn it into something that we can actually still get some enjoyment out of just ripping it apart and uh, enjoying going back through and starting to reread. So if you're sitting here watching this and you didn't like the show, 
uh, start a reread. Appreciate the the books and the actual source for what it is. And man, that's that's about all I got to say. Alex, uh, Dane, Man and Etherin, you got any anything last? Find laughter and tears. I guess if I uh, if I have one more thing to say, um, you know, if if you're supporting people pushing back against some of this woke ass bullshit, uh, go check out the Rip of Verse. Uh, somebody actually pushing back against some some genuine bullshit. The uh, dumbasses have been running the American comic book industry for far too long, um, and you know. It's it's good to have a, a fan and a fan like us pushing back against some of that. So go check go check that out. You're here. All right. Well, yep. thank you everyone. Thanks for coming out. Man and Ethereum, thanks for being on with us. It was a real blast and uh walking the yep. light. <laughs>